I'm gonna give it a minute uh, before I get back into it. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six bugs. So I added two bugs since I've started. So I actually ended up with nine bugs up here. Three down, six to go. Okay, back to it then. So jumping to top of buffer when invoking compiler. Hold on, this new music is louder. There we go. Okay. Jumping to top of buffer when invoking compile. Let me take a look at that bug first, make sure it's still there and everything. And that I totally was right that it exists. Okay, so this is not actually gonna work. I have to go to a place where I have a batch set up correctly. So we're going to use the uh, tree generator a little bit to test this. Ah, shoot. Okay. So, let me kill that. Kill it. Yes. Okay, what I want to do is add... Um, I don't like that it asks me that on a compilation thing, so I'm going to set up a thing to prevent that. I'll add that to my, I'm going to consider that a bug, so I'll add that to the list. Oops. I accidentally switched to the finished keyboard layout for a minute there. Um, unimportant flag. For buffers, so they don't ask to save. Hey, Abner Coimbre, hey there. How's it going? Uh, well, where we are is I started and I got seven or three of the bugs done, but in that time I added three more bugs to the list, so we're still at seven bugs to fix. Um, uh, and the stop spot situation is totally resolved um so that's where we are right now i'm just about to find out about this bug here jumping to the top of buffer when invoking compiler so i want to switch to app color again i want to build over here and boom that's the bug i'm worried about okay so do you think these seven samurai things maybe the music volume is too low it might be. I turned it down way low. I'll put it up a little bit. Canoocles isn't here, so, you know, I guess we don't need to keep it too low. Okay, so, um... Yes, that caused the p cursor to jump all the way up here. Uh, you know what I mean? So... Wow, things behave weirdly when Emacs is on sometimes. Um, hmm. So I need to track that down, basically. And that has something to do with when I invoke build, but it doesn't probably happen here. 
probably happens during app step. Check files update. Update child processes. Yes. <sighs> Begin update. Da -da -da -da. Do single edit. I want to know if. I never actually do the single edit if I still get errors. this file. Gotta go to this one. Code app color dot repeat. Cool. Go down here in the middle somewhere and alt M. It still happened. It's different now because now it's putting me at the beginning because the thing is empty but it still did it. That's interesting. Okay so what I changed there was I said let's never post things to the buffer because maybe posting the text is causing it but it looks like that's not causing it at all maybe it really is when I call this build function let's say I never did uh, well I don't think I can say that I never did that because then nothing will happen at all um, but I, what I can do is I can go here I'm gonna close some of these because having them open makes me uncomfortable probably makes Visual Studio um, feel entitled to crashing or something, so we'll just clear house. Okay. 
base map ID. Fine. Okay, at this point, if I were to look at uh, the layout, there are two active panels. Those should be the very first two in the array because I think that's how they get they get packed in, I believe. Yes. The first one should have the view that I care about. Boom. Let me take that and turn it into a file view pointer. Okay. So the position of the cursor is still correct right now. I'm gonna just um, say let's grab yes let's grab that copy it and let's put it right here because that is always going to be the address of this view and then I can just watch this cursor no matter what happens and see exactly the moment when it changes panel should be panel number one. Okay, good. Just gonna step through casually and watch that cursor. Passing raw inputs into the panels. Hopefully that doesn't do anything. Okay. Param stack. Yes, that's fine. size messages to send so nothing happens there mouse 3b50 3b50 nothing changed there but we're doing a redraw for some reason okay we draw both of the panels by draw I mean we get everything ready to draw them. Um, we update the cursor icon, which doesn't work at all, so that's fine. Grab mouse panel equals mouse panel. Okay. So, it hasn't happened yet. I'm gonna scroll up to the top of app step and wait for that to put a breakpoint in there and we'll wait for that to get called again and walk through again. Cause it looks like it's something that doesn't happen until the next frame. But that's why it's really nice to have static addresses so you can just keep going until something goes wrong. Alright. Check those timestamps, update child processes. Cause any problems, new cursor. Okay. Aha. Yep, I saw it coming. I started seeing where that was going. Okay, so that goes across every panel. It looks at the view on each panel and says, look, 
if this is a minor view, take me to the major view. I don't care about minor views. Then turn it into a file view. And what? Move the cursor? What am I? Am I insane? You gotta make sure that the files file the file views file matches the owl file, man. Okay, line twenty nine thirty nine. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Now there's only six bugs left. Don't darken the character with the cursor ghost. Okay. okay. Yeah, guys, I, I fixed the slash T thing. I'll, 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 I'll show you what the code that was doing that looked like. Because I know... Obner was suspicious that it was one of those situations where you introduce a bug and you just uh, don't didn't do anything about it. But look, I literally did write the code that outputs a slash and then outputs a T. I did that on purpose. It's just you guys didn't like it. So I've now made an option that outputs a space instead. And by default, it does this branch. But for me, I still have the slash T stuff. Okay, so don't darken character with the cursor ghost. What that means is, let me show you what that means. So Emacs has a cursor ghost too. You see on my right hand panel right now that the cursor has a position and if I switch to it, that's where my cursor will be, but it's it's like um, an outline. Uh, Forcoder does the same thing with the block cursor. Is it, it tells you where the cursor will be, but it doesn't have like a live cursor there. I call that the cursor ghost. Now, if I put the cursor on a character, it darkens the character there, right? I have a bug right now where the cursor ghost is also darkening the character. So, I believe that that is under... Uh, right now, you can't set how many spaces a slash T takes up. Or a tab, you know, whatever. Um, it's just fixed at four. You will be able to someday. Just being lazy. It's really not that hard to add in. I just don't feel like adding in like the the interface for you to actually do that. That's what I'm being lazy about. Okay. Um. Don't darken the character. Right. That's in here. When it goes to draw glyph, yes. Char color. If add cursor.
Okay, problem fixed. Honestly, bug bug squashing is like my favorite thing to do. I don't know why, I just really love tracking down bugs and killing them. Okay. It only shows loaded when all spell- Oh, that reminds me of something I need to change. Not really a bug, but I'll add it to like... Um, you gross. Give me the blue stuff. There we go. Minor to do. Easy to do's. Hmm. Um, better messages, for example, not behind us. Okay. Okay, when all spelled out. Alright, so that's an interesting one. Let me take a peek at that. So the idea is, when I'm looking at this list, it used to have when basic.cpp is already open, which it is, it would show the word loaded right here next to that. But now I have to spell it out completely and then it says, ah, that's loaded. So what I want to do is track down that string loaded. It's somewhere here in this file. I'm assuming. It might not be actually. Okay. Message loaded, message unsaved, message unsynced. None of these appear to be showing, so let's take a look at why that might be. Message. So by default, message equals nothing. And then file. Where does file come from? Working set contains. Oh. We need some kind of like closest match version of working set contains, I believe. So what is file used for? Wait. Append full path the file That's a little weird because that's not what I've typed in, is it? Info file name append full path the file name. Okay, I think I know what's happening here. I just need to see it in the debugger to confirm my hypothesis now. But I'm guessing that it's not getting the right file name because after appending, it's appending something other than just the remainder. And so it's getting weird looking like it's not actually the name of the file that it's searching for. Um, and then when I type in the whole thing, it fixes that. And so when I've typed in the whole thing, it correctly searches for the file by the correct name. 
If that didn't make sense, you just wait until I demonstrate. Because I think I'm right. Oh shoot, this is the wrong one. I really need to invest some time in cleaning up the um, UI code and putting it in one file. What I'm, well, I mean, really just putting it in one file is what I need to do. Because having it split over two different files is really annoying. Stupid. Okay, so my hypothesis is that this string here, full path, contains some bogus that's like this whole directory twice or something like that. That's not even a file. Those are folder names, and they're all coming out correct. Uh oh. I might be wrong. I haven't seen any reason to believe that I was right, actually. Maybe the length is wrong. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. That's correct. Alright. Yeah. That's right. That's not wrong. That's right. So, what's going on here, guys? Table find position. Maybe there's a bug in my get hash. So thirty three. And I'm guessing that we're at test. That's not right. The hash is agree. This is the file I want, but the name is not right. So when it does the match thing there, it's going to say they don't match after a while and it's going to loop through the whole table no, then it's going to return right there saying nope, no such file so how did that happen? must have been a problem when I added it to the table Okay, it couldn't have been when I first added it to the table, though, because if you think about it for a sec, when I first added it to the table, it got the right hash value, which means it had the right string then. Someone edited the string after it got added to the table. File set name. Push file by name. File name string. File 
file name string. Who are you? File name length. I'll bet you're coming straight out of string pointer. Uh, okay, gotcha. So table add needs to. Okay, got it. So what needs to happen is I need to wait until after I've set the name inside the file. Um, and to enforce that, Well, I wonder where else table add is being used, first of all. Three different places. Right there. Create super locked. See, here it's using the file's live name, which is the correct thing to do. And... There it's using the source path, which is the correct thing to do. So it was just that one time I misused it. Oh man, it's hard to say because all of these are totally different uses. It's hard to imagine combining it into one interface that does more stuff at once. So. Um. Still not working. Alright, so this bug's fighting back. That's a little more fun. Uh oh! Okay, I know what I messed up. There it is. So now it, okay, great. Alright, cursor images are broken. That's a boring one. Cause that's like Win32 stuff. Let's see. I wonder if um, up above. Uh, let me just go to the beginning of Win Main if I ever changed this. I know I messed with the changing this at one point.
Where's the window class? I wonder. File time, large integer, thread con stuff. Sure, sure, window class. Okay, that's where the class starts. Age instance. Okay, so I haven't done anything there to mess it up. So it's just down here where I'm doing set cursor up here. Where is this, by the way? This is during the update loop. I wonder if that's the reason right there. Seems like a good root possibility. This is in the wrong thread. So. What happens here is app step. Uh, get, get some. There's some result coming out. Redraw from update. How does that work? Yes. Sends a message. Okay. So that's what I can do. Well. Set cursor from update, um, and I need to know the name of that enum. Cursor. This guy here wants an application mouse cursor. No, not 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 memory cursor. There we go. And then I want to send the message. 32 vars to the window to four coder set cursor and I want it to set to this cursor right yes That's right, messages are only handled by the main thread. Send message sends messages to the window. You don't specify what thread to send it to, you just send it to the window. And then whichever thread reads messages for that window reads it. So this code right here No problem. So which of these two is the left one? I believe it's W param comes first. Yes. Yes. Okay. Closer. Now I need to pop up here to the down here to the X zero and go um, Win32 set cursor from update result dot mouse cursor type. Okay, this is all based on the hypothesis that I can't set the cursor from some non main thread, so uh So, 
hopefully that is not totally just made up and wrong. We'll find out. Oh. Yes. Okay, awesome. It's back to the state it was in before, which is not necessarily great, but it's good. I gotta figure out what to do about the non-client areas. Seems like I need to handle those because Windows won't handle it itself. That's a weird effect. I wonder if that's always going to be like that. That's more of a... I really don't want that there. What is causing that? So I resize the thing. And then it has to wait for the Yeah, so resizes don't get redrawn right away. It'd be really nice if I could get painting to be very, very fast. Okay, anyway. The painting too slow for resize looks really dumb. Handling cursor in non client part of window. So it doesn't spaz. There we go. Add these new bugs in. Repainting is too slow for the resize. It looks really dumb. It spaz. And this right here better messages. Alright, special character colors are not right. Uh, that's another rendering issue. Wait, no, 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 no. That's not a rendering issue. That's in this file. Um, okay, so right now main color. Okay, what I need to add is just a matter of if, uh, what's the character, how do I know which character I'm drawing? Yeah, 
Glyph ID. If is special character. Then char color. This doesn't even need brackets at that point. Um, I just need to pull out of the style now. Um, Um, special color, special color equals style main dot special color. Oh, special color doesn't exist. Well, what did I call it? Oh. Right. Better idea. See, is less than. Um, let's see. Um, ASCII table. Less than thirty two or greater than one twenty six. Then you got yourself a special character. Leap of faith, compiler. Believe in me. It will be a U8. And of course, there's no special characters in here because you've all made me turn off the tab thing. So now I gotta fix that. Now, I'm not sure that that's right, because that might actually, I might have changed it. No, that's not right. It should be red. It should be red and it's not red. So my question then becomes...
Oh, shoot. Darn it. That's more complicated, isn't it? Okay. Fair enough. Abstract.cpp. All we need to do is when we're making these items, we need to be able to mark them as special. So. Buffer render item. Shared. That's a P. Yes. Glyph ID index put ah, oh, it's such a bell. It's exactly six words. You know, six four byte. 6D words, whatever, it's exactly aligned, but that's okay. That might cause a few issues here and there, so let's track that down. Perfect. Okay. And now, if I go down to abstract again, well, there's always the question of where to put that definition flags. There we go. I guess I'll put it here. Buffer render be render flag buffer render flag um special character Then I go over to abstract.cpp, the music is gone and it's going to drive me crazy. Um, let's just get past this bug, I'll finish it, and then I'll do another si uh, record, I'll do another stream break so that I can uh, pick another soundtrack and break up all of the songs as I was describing previously. Okay, now all of these I want to mark as... Well, that one doesn't need to be marked as special, but if I ever print out one of these... Then I want these items to be, be marked as special. Oops. If I ever print out one of these, I want those marked as special, and I want, I want these marked as special. Don't need that marked as special. Okay. I didn't finish. Okay, okay. One more thing. <laughs> kind of funny. Okay. Um
not super pretty, but I think this code needs a little bit of rethinking someday anyway, so I'm okay with crapping it up just a bit, because there's like some kind of compression stuff I need to do in here that I haven't quite gotten around to doing. Um, Safor TV or something like this, uh, Safor TV is recommending that I put non-Latin characters into my text file, ones like, I don't know, like this, you know, and the thing with that is I know what would happen, it wouldn't work because I don't support them, so. I will someday, but I don't right now, so that's all there is to that. Okay. Okay, now the special characters behave as they're meant to, and I'll toggle them back off for now since people don't seem to like the slash T's. All right. Okay, awesome. So that's some pretty good progress. I've got two more easy things here and an easy to do listed. Let me update the rest of this list before I end the stream. And I'll probably restart after a few minutes so that I can eat something. Okay. Okay. Yep, I just switched to a different textbook, a uh, different notebook. This one has my porting to-do list. So once all the other n stuff is uh, kind of settled in, there's some stuff. Oh no, those are not blue. I want to keep this weird blueness bug going. There we go. Okay. Porting to do's. System fonts. File drag and drop. Command line parameters. User file as an user settings file. Low latency. 
MC stuff. And then, of course, actually write the port. Okay. And then... Doo -doo -doo. This also contains a few non-porting to do. So there's macros. Um, and... Auto complete. Oh, just thought of another one. Uh, replace word incremental in range. All right. Okay. All right, so there's where we stand. We've almost got this bugs list down. Um, I'm going to stop re streaming, but don't worry, there'll be more. I just got to eat and catch up, make sure I have not missed any communication from any people who might be trying to get in touch with me, yada, yada, yada. And if there's, if there's nothing that comes up, I'll be back in like 10 or 15 minutes. Thank you for watching with me so far.